This is the sound you get when you ride over millions of fragments of ice. Some of the pieces look small enough to hold, others are the size of boulders, and some of them are, well, miniature icebergs. Now, they've all broken off this glacier you can see behind me, flowing down between these great grey mountains, where the ice reaches the sea, where there are crevasses, that's when the ice splits away and falls into the ocean. Now, scientists say that many of the glaciers here in Svalbard have been losing a lot of their volume in recent years. And one really dramatic indicator of what's happening here is this. The land over on that side was for many years thought to be connected to the mainland. They thought it was a peninsula. In fact, it was named as such on the maps. But the glacier has retreated so far, so fast and so dramatically that it's now exposed all of this sea. So what was a peninsula is now revealed to be an island and the name on the map will have to change. It's just one indicator of the kind of transformation that's underway up here in the Arctic. Now, this is as close as we can get to the front of the glacier here, because to get any closer would be dangerous. Just in the short time we've been here, we've seen a number of huge pieces of ice break away and crash into the ocean. Now, to understand how the changes in the Arctic could be affecting the natural world, scientists gather samples, including from the bottom of the ocean, and bring them here to this marine laboratory. Let me show you what they do. Over the past few months, scientists from half a dozen countries have been conducting a range of different experiments. In this lab, they're looking at the effect of change down on the ocean floor. They're trying to understand whether if one species like these crabs is adversely affected by the warming of the waters, whether there's a knock-on effect throughout the whole community. There's a great deal that's not known about the Arctic ecology. A key part of the research here is to investigate what's in the air, the greenhouse gases involved in climate change. And to do that, they've stuck a lab right on top of this mountain to get away from any possible sources of local pollution. Now, to get up there, there's this rather weird and wonderful contraption, a miniature cable car. Well, this is one of the most exhilarating rides up the side of any mountain. It's getting us to the top of Zeppelin Mountain, where the laboratory is installed. Here's the mast that's carrying the cable up there, and the view already is becoming stunning. The field down below, the glaciers in the distance, and now the cable car is just slightly slowing as we approach our destination. And this is where you end up, near the summit of the mountain and an array of scientific instruments measuring a whole host of different chemicals in the air. This mast is where they draw the air in from to measure the greenhouse gases, to try to guarantee the purest possible samples. Now this is the most extraordinary vantage point. Up on Zeppelin Mountain there is the summit itself. And down below me you've got the great sweep of the glaciers, the mountains, the field, more glaciers in the distance. Down below, you've got the community of Nye Allison, where all the scientists live and stay and do their research. What they're finding up here is a persistent rise in the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide, proof, they say, that mankind must be having an impact on the climate. 